One of the coolest things about CTFs is that you get to pretty much learn something new, but also it pushes you to think outside of the box, but also do a little bit of research depending on the objective of the CTF. So for this video, what I want to do is I want to go through one of the capture the flags or fetch the flags challenges by Sneak and kind of walk you through the solution for it and how you could have also done it. But what makes this video very special is it's because it's SSRF and you guys know how much I love SSRFs and I think I've just built a career around it. And if you wanna know more about it, there's this video right here. You can understand the basics of SSRF, but if you're not familiar with SSRF, the quickest explanation for SSRF is that it allows you to actually access resources within the internal network. So that includes files, configurations, and so on within that network or that machine itself. This video specifically is going to be having two solutions. One is one that I just realized it's what I was intended. The second one is an unintended solution that I came up with that it actually worked because that's one of the things that I look for at SSRF and I'll talk about it in just a bit. Starting with the solution that was expected from the creators, because we have access to the source of this website, what we can do is we can just quickly look at the index.js file and right off the bat, you can see that for this specific CTF, you have access to a number of different endpoints, starting with flag. We're not going to bother with the source itself. We're just going to look at the flag because I'm assuming this is where we're going to look for our intended flag that is going to give us points for the CTF. And you can see that it says, hey, what's going on here? When I see something like this in a CTF, it usually means that you have to find some sort of a server side vulnerability that is going to allow you to make a request to this endpoint. A lot of times, this is like SSRF and RC or something like that that's going to allow you to just interact with this endpoint because they're just gating it to a point where it's not accessible from the outside network. So the first thing you want to do is going back to the source, we can see that they have a bunch of other requests, including the check connection and there's flag status. So if you look flag status, it's just going to say, hey, it's still there. I'm just going to ignore the source for now. And then we're going to look at check connections, which this one specifically it is probably just going to require a post request. And if we make this request, it's going to say, hey, you failed at parsing this URL. So it probably wants us to do something like a URL in JSON format URL and give it some sort of a URL.com and then closing this out and seeing where it goes. Let me just do this properly. Uh, we may have to set the headers for this. So it probably is looking for a content type. So we're going to do a custom header that says the content type is application JSON and hope that this was going to do it. It takes a while. It comes back. It says status 200. So it is going to take a URL and it's going to reach out on our behalf. We're going to actually confirm this by going to our browser, grabbing an interact SH server and popping that in here. We're going to do HTTP this URL. And as soon as it's done, you can see it is giving us the output for that. And somewhere here, it's going to show us the request that is being sent by our server. So you can see right here, some IP address has made this request. That is the IP address of the server. And it's just presenting this response to it. So we can confirm that it is making some outbound requests. The outbound doesn't really matter, but we can just confirm that it's a server side request. But now we need to be able to actually exploit this. So what we can do here is actually, instead of going down the path of doing a bunch of different random things, we're just going to throw in a local host in there and see what it says. And hopefully it gives us some error where we can actually figure out what is our next step. So we're going to do flag.txt. This time it is actually coming back and saying, hey, what kind of funny business are you up to? But it also says, hey, we're protected by parse URL. So now this is where you could you have two chances. I'm going to just run this through sneak and have it actually do a test. But honestly, you can also copy this and look for all the different CVs that are out there for it and kind of see what vulnerabilities come up. But just by doing a sneak scan, we can see that there's a bunch of vulnerabilities in the source of this application, including a parse URL server side request forgery for this CVE. We can actually copy this really quickly, go to our browser and look at what this looks like. So it looks like this is actually the server side request forgery. So it looks like it's going to take a URL, but it's going to take the valid host portion of this URL, make it the username and then pass it to our local host and then the port number and whatever parameters you want to look for. If you don't understand what this does, this is pretty much ignoring whatever comes in the first step as a username. Back in the day, you could actually log into some websites. You can still do that with some of the 401 websites that have a HTTP access on there. The way you would log into those is you would actually go in there for your username, you will type in username 
password at protectedsite.com. And what is going to happen is it's going to ignore this. It's going to become the username and password. So if it is requesting a username and password, it's going to place those in the username and password field of your HTTP access. But if it doesn't, it's just going to ignore that and just go to protectedsite.com. So if we were to just drop these and put a username, so for example, if our username is google.com and then we're going to go to nahomsec.com, for example, we're going to change this to nahomsec.com. Your browser is automatically going to ignore this part of the site. Actually, let me make this properly. We'll do it like this to make more sense. But your browser is going to ignore this google.com portion, thinking it is a username that is expected by nahomsec.com. And it's going to just redirect you to nahomsec.com itself. So I'm just going to pop this into the browser. And you can see it ignored it and went to nahomsec.com. So for this SSR specifically, there's a bunch of different vulnerabilities that came out. There is the CVE from 2022, and then there is a newer version of 2023 that bypasses this one that looks very similar to this right here. You can see it is pretty much the same, but in this case, they're adding a port number or actually a password in this case, it could be both. And the same thing at the end for the fake site is taking a port number as well. So this could be either a password or a port number. In this case, it's gonna be taken as a password, but in the latter right here at the end, if it is coming at the end of a URL, that means it's going to be the port. So if you don't put that in there by default, if it's an HTTPS site, it's gonna be 443. But in my case, because I'm running this CTF on port 3000 and I wanna access API flag, I have to make sure I pass it port 3000 in our solution. So let's try it out really quickly. Let's bring it back together very quickly and go back to our curl request. This is what we want to do. We're gonna copy this POC right here and we're going to see if it actually works. What you would expect to do here is you want to follow the solution based on the POC that was given. But if you run this, it says, hey, there is still a problem. You have to get past this parse URL. I thought maybe there was some funky stuff happening uh, where they wanted a particular host. So I tried things like google.com, for example. I added a bunch of different characters to this, but it turns out the actual solution required here, I'm not sure why I sent John Hammond and his friends and team that created these contents a little bit of hate but it turns out if you put two at signs here that's how it would work i'm not sure why the second at sign is there um it could be some sort of a filtering on their end it doesn't make sense uh but the solution requires two at signs and i found this by accident uh so that is the flag earlier in the video i did tell there's two solutions to this and one of the things that i love doing with ssrfs especially with ctfs is when i know that i want to access a resource like this. So let's say we wanted to access sneakctf.this site, hackinghub.com, port 3000 API flag. It's going to come back and say, hey, what's going on here? We know there's an SSRF here because this is protected by whatever uh, system they're putting in place that it's not going to allow us to access it without being on the local network on the machine. Well, a lot of times you can actually bypass this by just passing a host header and pointing it to the local host. And by just doing that, also you could have got the solution and you don't have to sit here like me getting a salty a little bit at this double at signs that it required for the solution. You could have also bypassed the whole thing by just doing this. So there you have it. I love SSRFs. This is a really, really cool example of just looking for different ways to solve this. You had a shortcut here with the host header, but you also had the solution to be able to just bypass parse URL using the CV is available and then using an SSRF to access the flag on this machine. All right, that's it. If you haven't already, do me a favor, like this video, drop me a comment. Let me know if you want to see more CTF solutions. And if you want to see more technical content like this, I'm looking to make more content for 2024 and I would love to hear from you. All right, that's it. I'll see you all in next week's video. Peace.